Today I would like to talk to you about the trial lock process within the European Union. But before I do that, I would just like to advertise that on January 16, I'll be speaking at Maastricht University, where I will be laying out the European case against the European Union. Um, so that's uh, in English. It's on a Wednesday at Maastricht University in the Netherlands. Uh, so hopefully I'll be seeing you there and we'll have an interesting discussion. Um, one of the biggest democratic deficits that the European Union has, and it's got quite a few of those, are the trilogue negotiations. Um, one of the ways how you legitimize and explain and involve people in the democratic process is by making them understand three things. Who made the rule? How was the rule made? And why was the rule made? Um, and on these three points, the uh, trilog system is lacking considerable um, uh, explanations. Now, when the European Commission drafts a piece of legislation, it gives it to the European Council, which represents the member states, and the European Parliament, which is directly elected by the citizens of the European Union. Uh, both of these chambers then analyze the uh, suggested legislation and then uh, amend it and uh, draft opinions on it. These um, two bodies then enter into negotiation. So the Council and uh, the Parliament then meet together, together with the Commission, which drafted the legislation, because as you know, uh, legislation is only drafted by the European Commission. Um, the, and, and these three bodies then negotiate between each other to figure out what the differences are. So let's say, for instance, you have uh, the new plastic strategy, then the council says, oh, we actually don't want to ban um, as many plastic items as the European Commission suggests. And the European Parliament says we want to ban more plastic items than the European Commission suggests. In that case, they, they meet together in order to find a solution. And that, on principle, is not problematic. What is problematic is that these meetings are neither transparent in the way that we don't know who represents uh, uh, which side exactly. Um, we don't know what the content is of what was discussed because it is not broadcasted. And we also don't know um, which side took which position because there's not even a report published after, um, after this process is done. Now, usually you can have, a, I mean, you would have three trilogue negotiations, but some projects take so much time that there's up to maybe 15 even uh, trilogue negotiations that can happen for a specific directive. And after 15 rounds of negotiations, you have no idea how you ended up from the beginning of the legislation to the end, because it can be amended significantly. Um, and when you don't understand how a, how a decision was reached, but then you're supposed to support it because, of course, we're all great Europeans, aren't we? Um, then I think that is a considerable democratic deficit. I personally believe that trilog negotiations should be open and visible for people to know exactly what the different positions were. If they're acting all in the interest of the European citizens, they have nothing to hide. And the legislation that they make um, on behalf of European citizens and apparently for European citizens, then it should be absolutely visible to us uh, what they are actually doing. Um, I believe the, the intention behind it is to hide behind these, uh, these secret meetings in order um, to take the positions that they couldn't take in public. Now, the end product, of course, is very clear. I mean, the, the end directive it says, lays out concretely what the individual uh, uh, position, what, what, what the exact legislation is going to be. But which body took which position and which trade-offs and promises were made to get concessions that we don't know and that we actually should know. Um, um, and these things should at least be in writing for people to examine. But you are, of course, free to disagree with me um, and, and uh, explain to me why these meetings should be secret and kept uh, from the public um, as to how the negotiations uh, went. So uh, that is it for me. Um, thank you for tuning in and see you next time.